chat. It is the 26th of November 2021. Have an itinerary today because there's quite a bit to get through. So I've actually gone back to my Royal Reviewer Days notepad and I've made some notes. Which nicely, which nicely leads us on to the discussion of the BBC Two Royal documentary that has been out. It's a two-parter. The first part was out, the next part is out next week. It's called The Princes and the Press. Now, this particular drama, documentary series by the BBC has raised, oh, it's raised a bit of a storm, hasn't it, people? So first of all, let me know, have you watched it? I did watch it. Um, and yeah, I've got a few things to say about it, I suppose. So this documentary was filmed without without Buckingham Palace being shown the actual full, complete and finished documentary. Normally when, out of courtesy, if you're making a documentary about the royal family, especially one that might have, you know, a little bit of contentious uh, things contained within it, it's normal courtesy to show Buckingham Palace the actual finished piece or, or, or newspaper article before it goes to press, so that the palace has a right of response, a right to reply. It's normal courtesy, it's normally done. However, the BBC waited on this occasion until the very, 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 very last moment to just issue basically a memorandum of what was contained within. So basically the allegations of that the, the uh, certain household, well, all the different royal households were briefing against each other. So, um, which was a little bit naughty, I think, of the BBC because normally the palace would issue some kind of response or perhaps even ask for someone on their behalf to be filmed, maybe, you know, somebody high up in the palace uh, to kind of, you know, read something out, for example, on the actual programme itself. But there wasn't time for that. Um, so, th Basically, in that occasion, normally the palace would not respond to something that it hasn't actually seen. Because, OK, they may have a list of what's contained within, but you just kind of... Because you haven't seen how it's been phrased, you would wait until you'd seen the actual whole thing. Um, that wasn't available to the palace on this occasion. So I'm going to just park that there for a moment. Also bearing in mind... Um, that Omid Scobie and Meghan's lawyer were invited to be on the programme. So just park that for a moment and go back to why I think this particular programme was made in the first place. So, cast your minds back to, it must have been, was it earlier last year? I've got all my time frames mixed up. The Martin Bashir interview that he did with Diana, the Panorama Explosive interview. Revelations were made, of course, that it was all set up. That Martin Bashir had basically gaslit Diana um, into doing that particular interview, which basically, for a, a historical purpose, has completely changed the way that we look now at that panorama interview is completely put a different um, a different perspective on it. As time has gone on, more truth has come out. So, at the time, um, Prince William and Prince Harry made statements, and Prince Prince William, I think, made the most kind of hard hitting statement. He went on telly, on TV, on the news, and he read out a statement. Um, you can find it on YouTube about the BBC's involvement and, of course, Martin Bashir's involvement in that documentary and the kind of cover-up that, that, that the BBC tried to make about it. So Prince William was very, very kind of publicly shamed the BBC. Um, and, of course, Prince William is going to be the next... Well, not the next, but he's going to be a future king. Um, so it had his words had a lot of impact on the BBC. Now, I think that that was a catalyst for the BBC to respond by making, basically, um, a derogatory, negative piece about William and the royal family. I think it was designed to kind of put William, in particular William, in his place. 
Um, the documentary itself began by kind of explaining this kind of intricate, complicated relationship, uh, this kind of almost deal, they call it the deal, between the royal family and the press. I've tried to explain this many, many times on the Royal Reviewer channel, and I, I think people just don't generally get the fact that it, it is very nuanced. Um, and if you watch this documentary, it's kind of explained perhaps better than what I could um, about how this kind of relationship is very intermingled, intertwined, um, and it's, it's worked for a very, very long time. But occasionally little blips happen where, you know, one, one party or the other kind of breaks that kind of deal. Cast your minds back to the Panorama interview. The royal family's response to the, to the Panorama interview was to actually open up the Christmas, the Queen's Christmas message to other broadcasters. Before then, it was always the BBC. The royal family's punishment to, to the BBC for the Panorama interview was to share the Christmas broadcast between the different networks. So, occasionally, one kind of, the media or the royal family do kind of slap each other down a little bit. Um, and I think that's what's happened in this instance. The BBC has decided to kind of punish um, William and the royal family. Now, what's interesting on this occasion is that the royal family has completely backed up William with the statement that they released, um, basically clapping back at the BBC. So, whereas before kind of one party might back down, what we kind of are seeing at the moment is a bit of a standoff. And I don't know where this is going to go. I don't know who is going to back down first, whether it's the BBC or Prince William. The one thing I will say, though, is in my own personal opinion, I think it should be the BBC that backs down because what you have to remember is if it is that they are kind of trying to punish William for that very public statement that he made about Martin Bashir and the Panorama interview and the BBC's involvement, then that has come from a very, very, very highly sensitive place in Prince William's life. It's his mother. He lost his mother during that time. Um, and the Panorama interview is widely seen as something that kind of was the start of leading up to um, what eventually um, became her, her demise. So I think the BBC needs to have a little bit of understanding that Prince William is very, and Harry are very, very sensitive about this. So I think Prince William needed to make that statement. I think the BBC's response should have just been, should have just been to accepted it and moved on quietly, just accepted it, moved on. Um, instead, what they did was decide to kind of clap back and fight back at William. Um, personally, I think it's very understandable that William felt that way and wanted to make that very public statement. Like I said, I think the BBC should have just taken it on the chin, basically apologised and just moved on. Um, whereas taking the route of trying to fight back, it's not done very good. And of course, William has taken the kind of um, aggrieved stance again about this documentary and again pushed back. So that's why, I, that, that's how I think this documentary has come about and why. Let's go to the actual contents of the documentary and talk about, um, I actually thought the documentary as a whole was actually quite fair. I think uh, it's come to light in recent times that there has been, um, I think, you know, briefings between different households. Harry and Meghan kind of seem to confirm that in the Oprah interview. Um, I know some people are going to have lots to say about that in terms of what's believable from Harry and Meghan from the Oprah interview. But I think also, you know, journalists, in, in the BBC documentary have kind of indicated that a lot, a lot of their sources are from royal insiders within the palace, i.e. high-profile members of staff who work for the royal family. So, um, I personally would say that it looks like that element was true. Um, and I think the programme as a whole was actually quite fair. I actually quite enjoyed the programme, and I'm looking forward to seeing what's what the content of it is what the content of it is next time 
With regards to Megan's lawyer from Shillings, who appeared on the programme, um, basically she was there defending Megan with the allegations that have been in the press about Megan being demanding and a difficult boss. Now, um, the lady from Shillings turned around and said, no, that's categorically not true. Megan is not demanding and is not difficult. Those allegations are fake. Uh, but then literally, you know, <laughs> we're talking to an employee of Megan. Would she not say that? I don't know. Um, but so we've got kind of that imbalance, also coupled with Omid Scobie, who made sure that he had his say in it, or rather the BBC made sure that he had his say in it. So you've got two people kind of very pro Harry and Meghan, pro Sussex, and there wasn't really anybody officially almost allowed to represent the palace. They, the BBC documentary did um, did show the statement that the royal the joint statement that the royal family made at the very end of the programme. But if the royal family hadn't made that statement, that wouldn't have been there. So if you can kind of imagine that if the royal family hadn't clapped back, then it would have been that the royal family literally had no right of official response within that. So it was very, it was a little bit un unbalanced in terms of the fairness of it all. So anyway, I'm going to read some comments and see what people, let me know what you thought of it, basically. Um, uh, Christine says, I don't think it's been shown in the US. Uh, I don't know. I think it was on YouTube at one point. And I think it's been taken down. Kate T says, I heard the BBC might have been last minute because they needed to edit until the last moment because of the Meghan Court case. Possibly. Um, HM The King says, dear Liz, about to trash the fam BBC. Yeah, I mean, it was some kind of memo that just kind of highlighted, I think, the in bullet point form what the content was. But the royal family aren't going to respond to something if they haven't seen it. Um, HM The King says, if Harry left as a direct result of this deal, why would he sanction his Meghan's lawyer interacting with the BBC? And No, um, that wasn't the element that the lawyer was talking about. The element that the lawyer was specifically talking about was the allegations in the press, the many allegations that were coming out at that time, that Meghan was difficult and demanding to staff, and that's why there was a high staff turnover. So Meghan's lawyer was categorically... Um, defending the Duchess in terms of that. That's the only part that they were commenting on. Um, Christine says, that's like when the President speaks, all the channels carry the speech. Yeah. H.M. The King says, but surely everyone at the BBC, given the findings, would agree with William's remarks on the Bashir interview. You would think, wouldn't you? You would think that logic would dictate that, but no. Um, this is definitely aimed, I think, solely at William. In fact, the programme itself, you know, says, talks about this deal where, you know, if if the royals play 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 the game, if they play the game and keep their side, then they it will ensure that they get favourable press. It even spoke about when earlier um, in the marriage of William and, William and Catherine that, you know, there was a, a time when they would kind of be a little bit standoffish to the media. They would kind of turn their heads when photographs were being taken, almost exclude the media a little bit, keep them at arm's length. Um, and what the media collectively did was to agree to, you know, put out stories that William was work shy and lazy and how much, how many engagements he had done whilst he was an air ambulance pilot at the time. And that kind of almost kicked him, kicked William into touch. Uh, and in fact, some of those rumours, those stories that the press kicked up you know are, are still in people's minds to this very day so the program itself kind of shows what what it does it shows the system in action um Hayden the king says but i mean the lawyer being there and participation in the documentary uh no well i don't know i don't i don't think i don't think harry and megan's quite see it that way i think they see that any chance that they can get to defend themselves against any allegations kind of is is paramount to what the wider picture is. So I think they would have seen it as a chance to just defend their position that Meghan wasn't difficult and demanding. 
Um, Barbie says the BBC is not the channel it used to be, in my opinion. Um, personally, I would I would probably agree. It's it's not the same. It is it is not the same. Whether or not um, you know you people like it the way that it is now, as opposed to what it was, I think that's up to. Uh, your own individual interpretation but i would agree with you it is most certainly not the channel that it used to be and on that note i am going to end that there uh we've dipped our toe back into the royal world for just a moment but once i've seen the second part i will of course let you know exactly what i think about that uh, next week so again thank you so so much for watching um I used to think so surprised you did that without a cup of tea. It was here. I just need to drink it. I forgot. Um, anyway, I'm going to go now. Um, thank you so, so much for watching. And I will see you next week. Mwah to you all. And goodbye.